one of the great things about DaVinci Resolve is the fact that it comes with a fully functional DAW or digital audio workstation built into the software, which means there's no dynamic linking or bouncing audio to outside things that can all be done right inside of DaVinci Resolve. And along with that DAW comes some plugins, some effects that you can use in order to get your audio sounding the way that you want it to sound. But what if I were to tell you that the way you're using those plugins might be wrong. We're going to talk about that in just a sec. But first, if you're new to the channel, if this is the first video that you've ever seen from me, hi, my name's Jay. I work in audio post-production in both the film world and the music world. And here on this channel, I teach the audio side of DaVinci Resolve. So if that is something that you want to learn more about, stick around, watch the video. If you enjoy it, maybe subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's dive into DaVinci Resolve. I've got a piece of dialogue here. We're already in the Fairlay page. I've got a piece of dialogue here, and I'm just going to play so you can hear the dry recording. You suddenly get the feeling that you're not alone. There's something in these woods, and it's watching, waiting for you or one of your companions to stray from the group so that it may strike. So it's just a little piece of Dungeons and Dragons inspired dialogue. I, I'll talk about where I got that from in just a bit, but I want to edit this dialogue and I'm going to use plugins to do that. Now we already know about some of the plugins. They're built right into the mixer. We've got our EQ, we've got our dynamics and we've got our panning. That's all basic stuff. But if we come up to the top of the Fairlight page and we click on effects, you're going to find other things like chorus and de and de-hummer and delays and dialogue processing and just a whole bunch of other stuff that we can use. And if you have third-party effects, you can find those in VST effects right here. And this is all of your third-party plugins. You can see I've got a whole bunch of them, probably way too many. That's okay. Now, most people, when they first start learning how to do audio for videos, they are taught that you can take a plugin from your effects library. We'll go with, let's say, Reverb, which is down here. You can just take it and you can either drop it right here on the track or you can drop it on the clip. And in some cases, that's correct, but that's not always correct. And in order to figure out why it's not correct, we need to first categorize our plugins. There are two categories that we're going to pay attention to. And these are categories that I made up. Okay. These are, these are not just, this is not a widely known terminology. This is something that I made up, but we've got effects and we've got utilities. Utilities are thing that, things that you're going to use to correct your audio, clean up your audio, make the tone sound the way it's supposed. Things like EQ, dynamics, stereo fixers, noise reduction, DS or that. Those are utilities. Those are things that we're using to correct and to fix our audio. Effects are things like reverb, delay, echo, things that are going to like do really cool stuff to our dialogue or to our other audio and make it sound completely different. These are actual effects, not things that we're using to correct our dialogue, but things that we're using to enhance and whatnot. Now for utilities, yes, we want to put things on the track level and very rarely at the clip level. So things like an EQ or like this, our dialogue processor, let's go ahead and grab our dialogue processor and we'll just stick that on the track right there. And now we can do things like de-rumble, de-pop, de-s, compressor, expander, excite. We can go into once it finishes loading, because that's taking forever. There we go. We can go, uh, let's say female voiceover. We can just do female voiceover. And when we play and do before and after, you can see some stuff was done. You suddenly get the feeling that you're not alone. There's something in these woods and it's watching waiting for you or one of your companions to stray from the group so that it may strike you suddenly. So there you go. That would be the dialogue processor. It's got some EQ, it's got some DS, it's got some compressor, expander, excite. These are all things to help correct our dialogue and make it sound the way that it's supposed to sound. But the fun stuff like echo, delay, uh, reverb, chorus, all that stuff, that is actually going to go on its own separate bus. I'm going to show you how to do it, but first I promised you that I would tell you where I got this piece of dialogue from, and I actually got it 
from today's sponsor, Artlist. Now, if you've been watching my channel over the last couple of years, you've definitely heard me talk about Artlist before because they're absolutely amazing and they're literally a one-stop shop for all of your video editing needs. I mean, let's just take a look at their site. This is everything that they have to offer. We've got music, we've got footage, we've got sound effects, we've got AI voiceovers, we've got project templates, we've got LUTs, we've got plugins, We've got artboards so we can actually curate assets for our projects. We've got everything we need. They even have their own NLE. So like you don't really need to go anywhere else. Everything they have is super high quality. Like their footage has raw and log versions, which is super important if you're trying to color grade your stock footage to match the rest of your project. And they've also got stems for their music. So if you don't want the vocals, you can take the vocals out. It's, it's amazing. And it's all really easy to find thanks to their AI powered search filters. I've been using Artlist for not just my videos, but also client videos and my podcast thanks to their unlimited license. And remember that piece of dialogue that I said I got from Artlist that was using their AI voiceover tool. It's really, really cool. You just come in here, you type in what you want, you choose your voice type. They got a bunch to choose from. You click generate. And then when you come over to my voiceovers, all of the voiceovers that you have generated are right here. They've kept them all. This is the one that I downloaded. Here are all of my tests. I was testing out different voices, and here's all the ones that I've done since they launched their AI voiceover tool. It's really cool. Artlist is a plan for you, whether you're a social media content creator, a freelance video editor, or a full-blown production house. So if you're interested in checking out Artlist, make sure you click the link in the description. Sign up today. If you sign up using that link, you'll get two free months on top of an annual subscription, and you'll be helping out the channel. So Win-win. Thanks so much to Artlist for sponsoring this video and for continuing to support creators like me. And now let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at buses. Now, a bus is kind of like a track, except that you can't put any audio clips on it. It is a place to send signals to. So, for example, everybody has a bus on every project, right? We've got bus one. This is your main bus. So every single track, no matter how many you put in your project, they're going to eventually get routed to bus one. And that is going to be the bus that processes your final audio. That's what gets exported on to your video file when you're all done editing. That's your main bus, bus one. You can also use buses for things like if you have multiple tracks of dialogue for the same character, the same actor, you can bust those together so you're editing all that dialogue at once. And you can also use buses for effects, and that's what we're going to do today. First things first, let's close out of our dialogue processor, and we're going to come up to Fairlight and click on Bus Format. This is where we can add and rename and delete buses. So we've got bus one. This is our main bus. And if I wanted, I can come out and just go main out. So that way I know that main out is my main bus. Now I'm going to add another bus here and I'm going to make sure that it's a stereo bus and we're going to call it DX. That stands for dialogue verb. So dialogue reverb DX verb. Okay. You can name your buses, whatever you want but I highly suggest remembering what you've named them and naming them in a way that you can remember and maybe name them the same way across multiple projects. So that way, when you go into a new project and you want to add reverb and you want to put it on a bus, you know, DX verb is your reverb. All of your reverb buses are going to be DX verb. Okay. So we've got it named. We know we got a stereo bus. We've got two channels because it's a stereo bus and we're going to change the color. I like making all of my effects bus is purple. So now we've got our purple bus. We're going to say, say, okay. And now if we come and expand our mixer, you'll see we've got audio one, we've got bus one, which is our main out, and we've got bus two, which is our DX verb. And since this is a reverb bus, so this is a bus that we're using for reverb, we're going to come over and we're going to grab our reverb plugin and we're going to drag it over to bus 
too. And that's going to open up our reverb and we can go ahead and we'll just choose a preset like, I don't know, cathedral. It's a nice big reverb to kind of illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. Go ahead and close that out. The next thing we're going to do is create a bus send. What a bus send does is it sends the signal to your additional bus while still keeping it in your original bus. This is different from a bus output, which is just going to send everything to a bus and nothing is going to come out of the original track. So if we come into our mixer and we come down, we're gonna see bus sends. And if we click the plus button, you'll see DX verb. So now we've got a signal being sent to our DX verb track, which has reverb on it. And if we click the settings on the DX verb send, we wanna make sure that our send level is at zero. Close that out. And now if we play, you suddenly get the feeling that you're not alone. Nothing is happening. And here's why. Because now what we need to do right now, the audio from bus two has nowhere to go. So we need to make sure that this bus is also outputting to our main out bus. Now, if we play, you suddenly get the feeling that you're not alone. There's something in these woods and it's watching waiting for you or one of your companions to stray from the group so that it may strike. There you go. Now we've got lots and lots and lots of unnecessary reverb on that dialogue, but you get the point. So to recap that, you add a new bus. You make sure it's a stereo bus. You label it something that you're going to remember. You add your effects plugins to that bus, and then you create a bus send from your audio track to your effects bus and a bus output from your effects bus to your main bus. Now, why do we want to use bus sends and effects buses and all of that stuff instead of putting effects plugins directly on the original audio track? Well, it's a great question, and there's a few different reasons for that. First of all, dry wet mix. Not all plugins come with a dry wet mix. In fact, I'm not even sure if reverb does. We do. It has a dry wet mix. So on here, it wouldn't necessarily matter. But let's say that this button here, dry wet, which is mixing the reverb signal with the original audio, let's say that that didn't exist. What we could do instead, since we have this on a bus, is we can actually go ahead and play this and use the slider in the mixer on the effects bus to do our dry wet mix. We can bring down our reverb to taste. You suddenly get the feeling that you're not alone. There's something in these woods and it's watching, waiting for you or one of your companions to stray from the group so that it may strike. See what I mean? You can give it more, you can give it less, you can control the amount of reverb. Also, we can automate. We can automate our effects and, and where the effects are so we no longer have to put like a reverb on an individual clip and make sure we're cutting in the right place. You don't have to do that. You stick it on a send, you automate that slider on the effects bus, and now you can control when and where that reverb comes up. It's really, really cool. Reason number three, you can EQ your effects. Now, one of the things that you may not know is that reverb and delay and echo and things like that, they can actually kind of create a, a bit of a low mid buildup and you can get some muddy dialogue. And so in order to combat that, you can actually EQ an effect when you use a bus send. Let's take a look. We'll go back to the beginning of my thing and we're going to play through this. We'll bring our reverb back up just so we can hear the before and after a lot better. And I'm going to open up my EQ and we're gonna play. And I'm just gonna use my low pass and my high pass filter to dial in my reverb and get it sounding the way that I want it to sound. You suddenly get the feeling that you're not alone. There's something in these woods, and it's watching, waiting for you or one of your companions to stray from the group so that it may strike. You suddenly get the feeling that you're not alone. There's something in these woods, and it's watching, waiting for you or one of your companions to stray from the group so that it may strike. You suddenly get the feeling that you're not alone. There's something in these woods, and it's watching, 
waiting for you or one of your companions to stray from the group so that it may strike. There you go. All right. The the fourth reason why we want to use effects buses and bus sends and all that stuff is kind of controversial. I didn't realize it was controversial, but apparently it is. See, it is kind of a well-known thing in the filmmaking world and also in the music world and basically in the audio world as a whole that a mono source means a source that is recorded with a single microphone should get put on a mono track. You can argue with me as much as you want in the comments, but this is kind of how it's been done since forever. So there you go. And that's all well and good. And it's great. And in fact, it's kind of required if you're working in surround sound, most of your tracks that go into your surround sound track are going to have to be mono. But here's the problem. Things like delay, things like reverb, they don't quite work right on a mono track. It doesn't sound great, but if you put, or if you send your mono signal to a stereo bus that has reverb on it, you now get correctly operating reverb or delay or echo on your mono signal because the effects bus is stereo. And that is how you should do it. That is how you should put effects on mono signals by putting them on a stereo bus. That way you can mess with the width and the e delay timing and all that stuff. You can do that by using a bus set. By the way, putting mono signals on a dialogue track is just one of the few mistakes that I see a lot of beginners make when they're working with audio. If you want to learn some of the other mistakes that you should avoid, check out this video right here. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.